ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our first game of the day. And what a cracker we have in store as alternate take on Fnatic. If you got some cheese to eat this one down, guys, it's going to be amazing. Alternate are the number one team in the, I was going to say North America, I'm so used to saying that. <laughs> number one team in the European LCS right now. And of course, Fnatic are the defending Spring Split champions. What's well, a battle of ludicrously good teams. Got to get that one out there as well. I'm going to say that probably 20 more times this game. But of course, this is the real test for alternate. It's how well they play without Creatin. Because Fnatic's a really, really tough team, right? Again, they went undefeated last week. And of course, they also switched around their bottom lane. And so we've got to see if both these teams can keep up their winning records. So Alternate are still atop the summer split here in Europe. And last week, we saw White Knight come in as that sub-4 for Elnord. And we'll be seeing more of him because Creighton somehow, we don't know exactly, broke his hand. And that's just, as I said, something that doesn't you don't shake off. Uh, it's not. And that's going to be a little bit rough. But however, the one thing that you've got to keep in mind is... Uh, White Knight's going to be a lot more at home. His usual role is AD carry. So while Alternate had a rough one and two week just last week, they're going to be comparatively a lot stronger now because it's going to be more comfortable yeah. for him. He was playing solo Cubit earlier. Seems to be crushing. He's he's a really, really good player. So that's going to help them. But, you know, for Fnatic, they're still really great, of course, right? And it's going to be another test for them. So we, we, we look at the Alternate situation and we realize that, okay, last week, you know, uh, they didn't have Frell and Lord. Okay, whatever, you know, it's one week thing. But Creator with a broken hand, that's not something you shake off, as you said. They, they've got to sort of deal with this reality. If they can't make this work, they either got to gel with White Knight quickly or find an AD carry that does work for them, because this is their new reality. Well, Fnatic, of course, have already made the changes coming into last week. Their new AD carry push who has already been a big factor. He's already managed to get himself into the top five of KDA from that single week. And his support player, Yellowstar, formerly the AD carry of Fnatic, has really grown already into that support role. He's doing pretty well. And the thing is, it's, it's funny because Yellowstar, to me, still feels like an AD carry. He's incredibly aggressive. Uh, he makes plays all the time. He's playing Thresh and Sona right now, guys, who can initiate land hooks, land crescendos. He actually dueled the Draven as Sona once last week, which is pretty hilarious so he's why a, not yeah why not you're yellow star do it you're one of the best players in europe so uh he, he he's getting there right and he certainly is a very very good player push you on the other side is interesting because he's playing the more long range carries he's playing varus and caitlin uh he's certainly cleaning up well again top five kda actually helped carry his team in that alternate match last week um the interesting thing though is his top uh played in solo queue is draven so i want to see if he brings out his competitive side during week five or aggressive side week five so before we hit Champions Slate, let's have a look at two key players. You might already be able to guess who they are, uh, who are definitely going to be important, if not crucial, in how this game is going to go down. That is, of course, the standing AD carry, White Knight for alternate, and Fnatic's new AD carry, Pushu. So this bottom lane is incredibly important. We'll start with White Knight. He is actually the highest rated alternate member in terms of solo queue rating, for what that's worth, if you want to look at that one. Uh, he is... He's the, the highest level in Challenger Solo for his team. And, and again, he's an AD carry main, so he's a close fit here, and he's going to be a good player. Push him on the other side, also a very, very top-end Challenger Solo queue player. Uh, incredibly skilled mechanically. Again, they went 3-0 with him that week. So this bottom lane is really the test here, because these are the new starting lineups for these teams. These guys are going to be putting up numbers. AD carries are, of course, important. We'll see how they gel. Yeah, and we heard from Pushu in that, in that feature video there uh, that he almost didn't believe what was happening yeah. to him. That you know, this kind of opportunity doesn't come around a lot of the time and that in the last week in week three he had incredible amounts of pressure on him to do well white knight has already felt the pressure of being a substitute in that mid lane of course he started things off uh, the game obviously uh, against alex Sitch in the mid lane was just a, a horror of a match for him yeah. uh, when it got a little bit better for him after that but we'll see how he adapts here in this ad carry role because as you rightly pointed out that's his main role actually and, and of course, now at this point, the team will be able to be practicing with them. So even if they don't have the best start right away, uh, it's a good player, right? We've even seen in North America that teams that get picked up, or sorry, players that get picked up off the street sometimes perform really, really well. Team Coast, for example, picked up Daydream and after Bloodwater got stolen away in their support role, did actually pretty well in his first week and just was the starting member for the team and was no longer like a sub until they found a replacement. He just meshed really well. So White Knight, uh, it's something we see a lot, really. Players get picked up in the team and they're like, great, I'm going to spend these next two weeks proving that I deserve to be here in the LCS, and, and it's on for him. Yeah, and if you can manage that pressure of sitting on the stage here in front of the crowd that we have here in Cologne on the, uh, on the, uh, on the stage itself, or, well, obviously the crowd on, on the stage there, looking at the stage, yeah. it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Nearby. Uh, if you can get over that pressure and feel comfortable, uh, you know, in terms of changing your home setup to, to this setup here in terms of comfort, then you know, you're not too far away from your normal standing. So we'll have to see how that one uh, comes down in this, but we are about to get ready here in Champion Select. And Freak, what are we expecting from these two sides? Well, 
right off the bat, the cast that dropped away from Peke makes a lot of sense. The, the whole Spring Split Fnatic lineup was so as and Peke run around and do whatever they want. Peke tended to bring someone with Teleport, whether it was Twisted Fate or TP Cassidy, and he just tried to make plays all the time. Uh, again, Elise getting ripped away from Fnatic, another big playmaker, and, and that sort of carry style role just worked for these guys. And so you remove them, and that makes a lot of sense. Same with the Shen away from Kerb. It's one of his most played. They're just they're doing the standard respect bands of champions you know they play and then they know that they'd have high impact with. Yeah, Lee Sin going to be banned away here from Aranea as well. Of course, uh, played it a lot there in the jungle. Actually, he's most played champion uh, so far in the summer split. Played five games with it and won four. Brilliant win ratio. None of it today, though. Fnatic taking it out. None of it today. And I'm sad that, uh, you know, alternate are the team that banned Elise, being that that's it's RNA's name. It means spider, and, <laughs> and he just doesn't want to have any of it right here. But oh well, let's see what they end up doing. Of course, we've still got a little bit more time to go for the bands. At this point, Twisted Fate is something you want to consider. Jace, another really popular champion. Uh, and that's one that, that's been first picked in, in, or banned really in Korea and North America, especially a heck of a lot. Certainly a popular one in Europe yeah. as well. So uh, these are sort of your standard setup of bands, whether it's, it's respect bands on one side or just the popular champions you tend to get rid of all the time anyway. I wouldn't be surprised to see a, a new new ban here from Fnatic, although Cyanide has played it three times already. Aranea mentioned last week that they're not too scared of letting that new new through for Cyanide, and they're in the end going to ban out the Fiddlesticks, a champion which Jerry has already brought three times to the table, picking up wins in two of those games. And Fiddlestick's ban makes a lot of sense because it, it actually is a good counterpick to one of Peke's favorite champions, which is Zed. Basically, yeah. when he death marks in, you get a three-second terrify, which means you do zero damage during death mark at that point, and and it allows them to basically nullify the the Peke ultimate, and so uh, that opens that pick option a little bit here for Fnatic. The Twisted Fate coming through also makes just a ton of sense. Just uh, the playmaking ability of Ferelnor is huge. Yeah, and that's funny because, you know, they locked that one in for Lord. I, I remember going back to, you know, maybe a year ago where for Lord, when we saw him in whatever online cups, everyone, everyone, everyone banned Twisted Fate out against him. That was the champion that he was known for. Uh, you know, obviously the highest ELO player in uh, in Season 2, hitting the, over the 3,000 mark. Uh, on the other side, Fnatic here locking in pretty much instantly that Nunu that we talked about before and the Thresh here for Yellow Star. He's played a game with that Thresh already. Picked up the win with it. They did win with that champion. It's interesting here because there's so many important champions already up here. You saw the Instalock Zed as well from Aranea, and actually he was playing that in the jungle in solo queue this morning. So uh, that's potentially where that's going to go here. But there's so many of these high priority champions picked up because of the respect bands like Lee Sin, Shen, and Cassidy. Uh, you've got champions that normally everyone's like, oh my god, that got through on both lineups here. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. And the, the Thresh as well is something that you don't want to let Alternate have. Jerry is an absolute monster with that Thresh. So good pick up for Fnatic there. Let's see what they add in now to this Nunu and Thresh. Of course, AD Carry already being picked up on the other side. Fnatic already have their support and jungler uh, in there. Sadly, it won't be a top lane with Soaz, uh, even though we know we, we love to see him play Nunu after that little show match he did for uh, for the All-Star spot with Wicked. Uh, but that's going to be the jungle with, um, with Cyanide. But it is going to be Ari and Varus locked in here for both Peke and Pushu. So this is pretty cool because this lineup now for Fnatic has a lot of crowd control as well as a lot of damage. But whenever you have a Nunu on your team, you can pick a lower damage AD carry like Varus or Caitlyn and still turn them into a late game monster because of Blood Boil. So Pushu is going to be having a lot of impact this game overall, especially if he doesn't get assassinated in the back line, which, which can be hard, but if he survives, he'll have a lot of damage output there. And also the Ari pickup is great because he can start messing with Pharrell and Lord. Peke is an amazing duelist. He's picked up someone who can screw with TF in 1v1 matchups, and that's going to really lower the amount of impact Pharrell and Lord has throughout the game. So right now, alternate hovering. I'm going to talk about Nami first of all, because I'm not sure about this Galio pick just yet. Uh, but Nami is actually Jerry's most picked champion up until now. Played six games with it, picked up three wins. Might although be Blitzcrank, which, you know, it's got a similar mechanic to that Thresh, which he's done so well with, with the hooks. Well, the players were trolling each other, actually, or in the pregame chat. They're troll trolling us as well. So. Yeah, well, they were talking about Blitzcrank, and uh, Fnatic dared him to pick up Blitzcrank in this game. <laughs> so he clicked it to, to, to honor that whole... Uh, Point of smack talk here, but yeah, so the Nami and Zat coming through, I like these to fill out the lineups you've got now, a lot of heavy initiation from alternate. Uh, the Zat can go in there, you've got the tidal wave to follow up, and that's something that I feel that all teams need. If you get an early game lead, you need to be able to push through and, and actually close the game out. It's something actually yeah. we saw uh, in Thursday's North America game where Vulcan uh, had a huge lead against Cloud9 and just couldn't push the game through because they didn't have enough initiators to dive turrets. Alternate, they're a team that's it's good at getting ahead early and good at pushing through. The Zach pickup works a lot, uh, does a lot for them here. 
So they're actually uh, locking Kennen here as the last choice for Natic. That's so our second most played champion after that Elise that he's recorded victory after victory on uh, both in the spring split and the summer split. So now he certainly knows his way around with his Kennen. What are we thinking to these two setups here? I mean, Pharrell not, as we said, playing his Twisted Fate. He's going to be around the map uh, once he hits level six. And it looks like Peki is going to be taking a teleport to maybe counter that. So this is interesting because Alternate has a much easier time of forcing objectives and forcing lane fights in the beginning of the game. You've got the Twisted Fate ultimate, you've got the Zac jungle potentially. We'll see if they swap with the end of champion select, but you've got guys who can start fights and then it's easy for Ezreal Nami to follow up or for the top lane or whatever to follow up. And so they'll put a lot of pressure on Fnatic's lane. Now on the other side though, Fnatic has a lot better dueling potential. They've got Ari who's gonna run around there and make your life miserable. Nunu doesn't need to sit in the jungle very long. He can gank constantly, steal buffs away and make people's lives diff uh, uh, difficult. And in fact, yes, at the very end of Champ Select, Kerp and RNA did switch, so it's top lane Zac and jungle Zed. Uh, so again, you've got heavy initiation and you've got pretty good dueling potential, though, on the other side for Fnatic. Yeah, interested to see how RNA really comes out of this one because he has, uh, as you said, a lot of Elise in. That was banned this time around. Hecarim has been another go-to champion for him. We saw the Elise uh, coming out there as well. But Zed going to be a new one that I'm assuming, like you said, you saw him playing it this morning. He's, he's obviously been doing a lot of training this week on that Zed to get it up to a level where he feels comfortable forced out for whatever reason, but we are in-game then. Alternate versus Fnatic here, our first game of week five of the summer split in Europe. And right from the start, are we going to see any action here? I mean, the likes of that Twisted Fate gold card, the bubbles from Nami can always be very dangerous. Yeah, I feel like Alternate has a slightly better level one setup, though all of Fnatic's lineup are, are very, very, actually, I guess for really both these sides, both these teams are very good at fighting level one. There's a suite of crowd control, a lot of brush checking as well. Uh, you've got guys like um, Ari and Kennen who can check brush with their various Q abilities or the charm either way. Uh, Fro and Lord again with the sun as you call out. So uh, if something does happen, you, either team can almost guarantee a death on the other side, but that also might make these teams too afraid to invade for anything. Yeah, and well, let's not forget the death sentence, possibly, for Yellow Star, uh, if anything does happen here at early levels. But that's a lot of wards down across the map here already. It's White Knight making his uh, AD carry debut here today and just spamming up that Pulse Fire Ezreal, why not? Yeah, he did play Quinn last time they fought Fnatic, actually, just, uh, just last week. So, uh, but certainly he's primary in the role this time around, not making creatine. Uh, you know, fill in a second AD carry. So we come through here, and it looks like a pretty standard lane setup here for Fnatic, and the same for really alternate here. So uh, it's going to be interesting to watch. It's a standard 1v1 top lane, a 2v2 bottom lane, unless, of course, things change around. Ooh, but Fnatic's looking for a late invade. They are. This is actually going to be spotted here, though, by Kerb. You can see Zach there in that brush on the left-hand side. So Fnatic are going to walk down from this one. Alternate know that this one's happening, so they know that their blue buff is going to be gone when they get around to it, and they're reacting perfectly to that one right now. Yeah, but they do go through a ward, so Fnatic knows this is getting traded back. If they want, they can send their bottom lane to screw with them and try to slow down this invade. You need to be careful, though. There's a lot of people there here. Four alternate, four out of the five minutes. Yellow Star going to get locked up there in the Aqua Prison. Not going to be too much of a problem for him there, though, an alternate. Go about their merry way on this blue buff. There won't be anything to stop them from that. Now, it's a very, very standard setup here. Both teams stealing away blues is not the hardest thing in the world. And in fact, with Nunu grabbing his own red now, that's cyanide for Fnatic, we're going to have the standard two and two buff trade. The only thing that happened here, though, is Fnatic got to the bottom lane sooner. Alternate is actually down in experience right now. A couple minions dive while out of XP range. That can mean something. Yeah, the cyanide was faster over to that red buff here as well. Both players actually opting to leave one part of that camp still up, so neither player is going to be able to get the reset timers on that uh, from the buff that they actually stole uh, until later on. Actually, there's a ward there for Fnatic. Alternate didn't put one down on that other side, though. And that's a good thing for Fnatic, I would say, because, well, both these buffs will respawn late. Fnatic will probably be able to know that timer later on. And because they're the team with Nunu, they're the one who's probably going to counter jungle that buff again when it does take back. I, I think partially because they have Nunu, they warded that to make sure they know the timer when it does go down. So this mid lane then, Twisted Fate versus Ari. Ari going to be a bit of a nightmare, I think, for for Ellen Lord, but he's shown that he's handy with the Ari before and certainly should be knowing how he's going to go up against Xpeke's Ari this time around. It's always going to be a difficult matchup, but the interesting thing is because Peke went teleport, his kill potential in that 1v1 is much lower. That said, Ari Nunu, even without Ignite, has decent kill potential on a uh, uh, on a Twisted Fate. Whereas on the other side, TFZ 
has not as much pressure on the Peke, so he's taking a non combat summoner, and it's going to work out for Fnatic, I think. Here we see Cyanide once again getting himself off to the jungle, and there's a shadow right up in the brush with him, and he decides, you know what, let's not mess around there. Just going to back straight off from that one. So jungle's just seen each other early on in this one. This top lane, as we'd expect, really, so as uh, putting a lot of pressure down to curb with these auto attacks. It's a range versus melee matchup, and Zed's early jungle ganks are not very strong, so that's why you're seeing Pretty much all of these lanes push. Every single Fnatic lane is pushing, which does two things. One, they know they're safe versus the Zed, so it's not a big deal that they push. Two, if there's ever an invade coming in, they're very close by and able to participate in that fight and and you know not get pulled out when when Sinai goes to counter jungle. Bottom lane, as you said, is pushing up as well. RNA is coming in. This time, he actually won't be spotted coming around from this one as they managed to lock Yellow Star up there in the Aqua Prison. He's actually down to half HP right now. Let's see if RNA can actually get into this one. There's the exhaust down onto RNA who flashes in. White Knight gonna go in there as well, but have they got the damage? The hook will land onto RNA. He's under the turret and he's oh. gonna go down. First blood goes to push you, and he gets the double buffs. That was absolutely great by Yellow Star. He saved the death sentence the entire way through and said, I will pull you in a turret range if I land this and then went for it. Ara had already burned his uh, his shadow to get a slow to try to get the kill to happen on Yellow Star. As Pushu blocked Mystic Shots, Yellow was able to survive long enough to get the pull in. Both those players played this one exactly right. And look at that. Pushu's gone home now. Already have 30 CS on Tim's Peke. And Frelon have a little bit of a tangle in mid lane. Uh, but Pushu or in the top lane, he's got stuff going on. But I will get to that push you point, mm -hmm. uh, which is that Vamp Scepter is now collected in for him with the Drawings Blade and boots of speed after five minutes. So that is absolutely great for him. He's going to be able to sustain this lane. He does not have a healer on his team uh, at all. So he's up. it's kind of up to him to survive in that lane. Ezreal and Nami both have pretty good poke. But this means now that the Fnatic bottom lane can play rather aggressively, try to bully their opponents out, and then recoup any losses because they've got healing. Yeah, and you see there what Fnatic have gone, uh, what alternate have gone for on the AD carry side. Triple Doran's blade coming out for Ezreal, and that's a sign of an AD carry who's scared of falling even further behind, if I've ever seen one. Right now, Soas is still bullying this top side. Aranea is off to the side, but, you know, losing that double buff here, not going to have the slow from the red. That would be very hard to lock down a Kennen, especially one who still has Flash. And he's got his ultimate as well, so good luck dealing with Soaz there. Kerb doesn't have enough health to really make this one happen. I feel like alternate's wasting their time, but Soaz is pushing down. He's going to get... Yeah, like that. He keeps pushing down, and then Ara realizes, no, I can't make this one happen. So to talk about the Ezreal build, though, we see a lot of openings to the blue Ezreal build, right? Normally they get the, the Mana Mune, they get the Iceborne Gauntlet, and we see like Bloodthirster opening, or Spirit of the Elder Lizard opening. If he opens Triple Thorn's Blade, and then just goes into tier, he's got early game stats, and can rush that Mana Mune, and still have decent lifesteal, because he's got lifesteal quince, he's got 15 life on hit. Well, let's see how that one all works out here for White Knight. It is first game for alternate as AD carry. Start obviously wasn't optimal, but you'd probably say, Aranea, that was your fault anyway. <laughs> look, now look what's happening. Uh, their AD carry's got double buffs and first blood on him. Uh, mid lane here, 36 to 49 CS currently, and Peke really leading the way with that one so far. He is. This is just a rough matchup right here for Pharrell and Lord. Peke just constantly pushing and Twisted Fate. His damage, you know, it's really hard actually for him to last hit on turret, just in general. Uh, he can burst out something with a blue card, he can sometimes uh, private with a stack deck as well, but um, as Pekka keeps pushing the turret, keeps pushing, keeps pushing, lands charms like this, it just makes it difficult for Pharrellan to keep up. Minus 14 is not the worst, and, and again, there's no jungle pressure, Pekka can just keep pushing. Speaking of the jungle, we see Cyanide just going down to put a, another ward on top of that blue buff. So they looking like they want to challenge for the next time. He spawns up a Jerry down in the bottom lane, going very, very low from this one. He's managed to get the heal off onto himself and stay alive from that one, though. Yeah, that Death Sentence did land from Yellow Star, pulled the flay in, a lot of burst came off the back of that one. Yeah, Jerry forced to flash as well. And the thankful thing is he opened with a Doran's shield. Jerry yeah. realizes he's against a, a pokey lane that's very difficult and they're behind. So he optimized or uh, opted in for a Doran's shield to survive that harass and you saw it work out right there. Yeah, exactly. That's probably the single thing that kept him alive in that last fight there. Otherwise that could have well been a 2-0 push you, not something that alternate would have been really factoring into this one as Pharrell and Lottie are taking a lot of damage. Peke gets stunned up there and in the end they decide 
I think more out of respect and the fact that their mana pools are pretty low at that point. Okay, let's back off from this. Nothing gonna happen there. And look at Ferelno's opening buy. He rushed Mercury Treads, knowing that he's not only against a lot of magic damage as a team, but all of them have some kind of crowd control that you want to get tenacity for. And he knows that he's gonna be under a lot of siege. He can be tower dived and in general in team fights, it's gonna be difficult for him to survive. So Frollo Lord, very, very defensive up here. You can see him having to hide from his own turret uh, and go all the way back around as he picks up his blue buff. But Peke knows about this. Yeah, blue buff is there. And here comes Peke, gonna put a lot of damage onto Frollo Lord. Can he finish off? No, Soa will come around and steal it. Aranea will be popped as well. Actually finished off by Cyanide there. They're now chasing in onto Kerb, who's gonna elastic slingshot his way off there. But he may just get stunned up here early enough. No, not quite got it there, Soaz. Oh, that will be two kills in quick succession coming out for Fnatic. Brilliant done because of that ward that we saw put down from Cyanide. It's so beautiful. I mean, Fnatic are really playing around this. Again, they knew the timer of the blue buff because they warded it. That was already a, a sort of pre-constructed invade. The ward came down to spot when Frontlord came by. They knew when the jungle came back up. All the lanes were pushing so that it was easy to show up to the blue buff. Fnatic had this move planned since minute one. More walls being put down there inside of Alternate's jungle by Cyanide. He's really keeping that vision high, and that's obviously a key that Fnatic have in this game right now is to you know make sure that the vision is completely sealed up on both sides of that map. Kerb is still having problems in this top lane, almost 30 CS behind, plus a kill behind and an assist behind. Uh, what so as has right now with his Ken. Yeah, and this is really just, uh, again, it's it's the constant pushing, it's the team being ready to fight at a moment's notice. All these guys scrap so well at level 6 and beyond. All of them can, can participate in crowd control, all of them have decent burst. They're all good at this, so whenever something happens, it, they're just able to easily key off of that Cyanide Nunu jungle who's going to lead invades, make his way in, be a tanky yeti, and life is just difficult for alternate. Their early game fights are not nearly as good. Zed has not scaled up, doesn't have any items yet. Fro Lord opened Mercury Treads. He has no ability power till now. Uh, he's not even able to force engagements because he's been pushed all the time. Fnatic are not only picking very well, but they're playing these picks very well. And we see that tier being picked up here by White Knight, so he's more onto his normal build. Is Frelnor gonna get caught out here again by Peke? Is he gonna be able to finish off? Not quite got the range, the wild cards come out. The charm will miss you, and Frelnor is still waiting. This stun did land onto Peke. Well, Peke managed to get in there. Aranea gonna get the death mark down, and well, that's enough for him to pick up the kill. Cyanide gonna go with absolute zero for this one. His yellow star in the bottom lane is going low. White Knight gets rooted up there by Pushu's ultimate, and look how low Aranea has gone. Cyanide gonna fly. Flashing. There's a very delayed snowball coming out, but a snowball nonetheless. And that will be leaving us at 5-1 to Fnatic. And you can say that Fnatic are really snowballing ahead this game right here. The invades from Sinai just dropping everything and, and not allowing much to happen. And Ara actually had this one misplay there where he, he moved to his ulti clone. He, I don't know if he didn't know which which shadow was, was which one, but he actually jumped back towards Fnatic's turret, which let just that Yeti just keep mauling him down and, and drop him with a snowball. So. Uh, unfortunate there for RNA. I did get the kill on, on Peke, but a uh, great pick up there for Fnatic again. Yeah, let's start as left push you alone here in the bottom. Who's actually going to have to use his barrier and his flash to get behind the turret. White Knight's going to dive in here. That's going to be a kill. He has to flash away, but here comes X Peke. Is he going to get the finisher? Yes, he is. Pharrell Lord came down here as well. But look at the uh, Yeti coming in from this one. Nunu is going to get at least one of them slowed down. That will be Pharrell Lord. Jay Ree's going to fall here. The ultimate from Peke coming up. And now they've got the possibility for, to finish Pharrell Lord as well. They will. It's Cyanide that picks that one. Munches down a minion. 8-2 Fnatic. Absolutely beautiful read on both sides. Like, so Peke with the teleport came down to try to get the kill on the Diving White Knight, and that was good. Frelnor had already realized that was going to happen. Pop Destiny to try to counter gank Peke. Unfortunately, though, Cyanide is also on the same page, saw that gank coming down, and made sure he was there to participate in the fight as well. And so uh, both these teams are, are like two steps ahead of each other, but it's just working in Fnatic's favor a little bit every time. There was a true shot barrage coming over to check Dr uh, Dragon, which actually got Fnatic a little bit low. They can see Fnatic, uh, Cyanide and Xpeke both flashing red on the side of your screen. And look at this. So as was about to get ganked by Aranea, and those spidey sensors kicking in. He just goes, okay, I'm going to recall. Aranea got no chance to get in. Even with Elise ban, still has a spidey sensor. So <laughs> congratulations, so as knowing what's going to happen on that one. And unfortunately, Ara, again, you know, Zed is a champion who scales with farm so very well. You can see the Spirit Stone opening. He's trying to get down there uh, to the Blade of the Ruined King to get his burst up there right now. But normally you see a 15 to 20 minute Blade of the Ruined King. That's the pretty much standard timing you see that for a solo 
laner. And unfortunately for Ara, he's only made one gank work so far, so he's really not on pace for that item right now. He's at 50 gold right here, 50 in his pocket. So he's got 1,800 gold to go until that item is done. And he's a thousand gold behind Cyanide at this point. Not good news for him. As uh, the 10CS lead in the bottom lane for Push, who of course did die with that uh, that tower dive from White Knight, picked up an assist from it as well though, once that was all changed around. So he's left at 1-1-1. One, one, one. And uh, obviously does have that item advantage in there as well. That Bloodthirster already done. Uh, Vamp Scepter has now been finished by White Knight, so he's got a little bit more sustain in his lane. And right now, actually, the oh. jungler's in a fight right here. Cyanide could be in a lot of trouble as well. Deathmark goes down, but here comes Xpeke, managing to charm up for Eleanor, and Cyanide is still walking away with this one. He had those double buffs on, as Xpeke gonna go aggressive, gets the kill down on towards Twisted Fate, and can he even pick up Zed? Soaz might be able to do this one as he comes rushing around the corner. Here's Xpeke from the backside, and it will be a double kill for Xpeke. He's gonna die to the turret. But nonetheless, you know, they managed to pick up kills out of pretty much nothing, out of Cyanide being caught there. Now, and this is a tanky Yeti. He's got the Spirit of the Ancient Golem already done. He's level 9 right here, which is a, a full level above Ara. It's almost up to with the, where the Soul Laners are as well. It's a huge tanky Yeti, and it's hard to catch that one out when you have under-farmed, under-itemized people fighting him. One good thing, though, there is that Aronair, of course, did manage to shut down Xpeke, which has given him a little bit of a boost when it comes to getting in towards that Blade of the Ruin King. So as in Kerf actually going head to head, Cyanide is off to the other side here, just picking up that blue buff. As we see Destiny being brought in, so as flashes early over the wall, and they're going to be able to walk away from that. That was a good move by Soaz right there. He actually waited to see which way Frolin Lord came down and then flashed the other way. If Frolin Lord, uh, the thing is, he can just wait out Destiny, right? So Frolin has to pick something, and Soaz read that situation very, very well. However, because of those moves, Alternate does get control of their own buff. That's the start of the things that need to happen for this team. If they can just hold on, they can scale throughout this game. Speke coming back into that lane, blasting one Negatron Cloak, plus that Haunting Guardian. So he's going to have an Abyssal Scepter before we know it coming on as well. So he is in fantastic shape at this point. Right now, Cyanide and RNA are going to meet up once again. And there's not really a lot you can do about that yet, to be honest. As Zed at this stage of the game, yeah, you can challenge him, but Peke is going to be there before you know it. And with that slow that he's got, he's just a constant menace to keep up with. He's going to be really just difficult to deal with. And the thankful thing for Alternate, is, is twofold. So one, it's not hard for Jayri to turn his ultimate on just late in the team fight and knock out the absolute zero while, while still hitting the rest of the team. Otherwise, the rest of their crowd controls are fairly single target based and they don't want to waste like Nami Bubble or Twisted Fate Gold Card on Nunu. So Jayri can hold that one down. The second thing is um, it's uh, Peke is spamming so much magic resist that if Ara does finally get some real gold, he can easily kill Peke in a fight. Oh, they've managed to actually lock up push you there with that Aqua Prison, but he didn't really react too much to that one. did use his barrier, though, just to make sure that he could mitigate some of that damage that Alternate were able to throw out on, for, on him for free. We still see no towers go down. 16 and a half minutes in. Something that we're not so used to seeing at this stage uh, of the game right now as XPK is going to be trying to take the first one in this bottom lane. And I think the way that Fnatic are pushing so heavy now, they've said, right, it's time for a tower now. Oh, they get the hit on the White Knight, but he's going to Arcane Shift away from that one. They finally get the pressure on the turret they wanted. And this is partially what happens when you've got those standard 1-1-2 one, one, lanes. It's a little bit harder to push the turrets down. You're actually seeing them all finally go down right now, almost in all three lanes, because the pushing finally paid off. Here's his dive at top. Yeah, so as I actually managing to catch Kurt there, but he's less bounced with the flash away from that one. But can he actually escape fully? For Lord's going to die under his own turret. Peke only losing a little bit of health. And now Kurt is running for dear life. He's going to have to either try and back here in this brush or suicide, and actually he's going to be able to uh, recall himself off. All right, so Jerry getting out a well, uh, getting out as well. This mid turret about to go down here for Fnatic. I don't see Ara actually stopping this push right here, despite his attempts to wave clear. So the aggressive landing phase, because of the stronger early game jungle, has paid off here for Fnatic. The turrets have finally gone down. You know, it wasn't these two on one lane setups for you guys push really, really hard, you make these three on one dives, and it all works out in the end. Instead, it was this just one-on-one -on -one slow grind that finally pays off, and now the mid-game starts for Fnatic. Now, they've got to make some real choice because they can't just sit in lanes and push the secondary turrets. They've got to start really moving their team around the map and finding things to do. 
to see that Kurt have actually gone for the Spirit Visage as Peck 8 uses a Lantern to get in closer and Alternate instantly backed off when they saw that Lantern was down there. You don't want that Ari flying into your face, that's for sure. That is right now a 6-2-3 Ari. As I said earlier, Haunting Guys on the Abyssal Scepter is now finishing there with that Finish Codex as well. So that is an Ari that's bringing a lot of pain down onto this Alternate team and not just the kills here. Look at the CS, 45 CS in the lead. Yeah, he is definitely winning his lane, and we've seen that time and time again. For Alan Lord, 0-5-1 compared to the 6-2-3 and Ari, as you mentioned. It's just, it's a one lane there for Fnatic. And the one, again, the saving grace here for Alternate is that Peke is just glass cannon. He is building just damage. Uh, the the Deathfire Grass coming up next for him. He just wants to kill those single targets really, really fast, and he'll be able to do that. But if there's ever a missed up here for Fnatic, the chance to come back is there for Alternate. That's what they're doing right now, just spreading around uh, that red buff on towards the AD carry White Knight. Fnatic look like they may start off the dragon. They've got a pink ward in there that's been able to clear out the vision. And they've got, well, Nunu with a smite, who's basically two smites, if we're honest. He's going to take this dragon down a lot faster than Alternate can even think about replying to. And now Xpeke is even moving on towards Aranea's position. Had a ward down there by those wraiths, and he's going to be able to take them away. And this is really good for Fnatic. Now that they're pushing in, they're trying to keep their lanes pushed down. Soaz actually came down from the top lane, so he actually didn't stop Kerp as Kerp pushed his top lane right there. But Fnatic are really prioritizing now the neutral jungle really right here, right? The the early gank they got on the bottom lane where they got a bunch of kills picked up, they did Dragon off that instead of the bottom turret saying, our, our laning phase is still going to be fine, we don't need to take turrets right now. Uh, and then again, as they've taken the outer turrets down, they're prioritizing Dragons again, they're starting to take jungle buffs away, they're going to keep strangling the map, it seems. And actually, they, they are going for another laning phase. They're sending so to the top lane, they're going back to the jungle and saying, we'll keep everything pushed in, we'll collapse a little bit later going as it's been going right now because it's working out for Fnatic. There's no doubt about that one. Across the board, they are ahead in CS, uh, except the jungle, funnily enough, which RNA has really had to struggle for quite simply because uh, Cyanide has been everywhere on this map up until now. Kerp himself has gone a bit tanky with this one, gone for that Spirit Visage first. Got the Giant's Belt in there along with a Doran Shield as well. And here is the blue buff being picked up by Aranea. He saw that they used a pink ward actually just to make sure that there was no one there to actually uh, counter that one and stop that being picked up again. If Fnatic did want to stop that, you can see them diving right in there. Just a couple seconds too late though. They get to steal away one of the smaller minions, but not a big deal otherwise. And, and this is really what alternate is is aiming for of course Kerp has to go tanky because they've got a carry jungler and the rest of the team is squishy and long range as well so it, it is on Kerp. he's going to be the one to build the Aegis as well as the game goes on I would expect um or as the rest of the team is just trying to sort of survive in, in kind of rough lanes right here so uh if Fnatic doesn't find any more jungle monster to steal we've got to figure out if they keep playing the laning phase game or if they actually go for pushes like this and speaking of the pushes they are Still pushing into this one. Kerp actually comes flying from the backside. So as says, well, you can slow me, but are you really going to commit to a fight right now when we are looking so much stronger than you? In the end, Fnatic still holding on. Oh, actually, I don't know if he uh, just stopped that there or whether that went through and didn't quite connect. Either way, you see there the piercing arrow and almost half of White Knight's health, along with Aranea's health, dying, uh, disappearing just from that one piercing arrow. Yeah, Pushy was actually playing as a caster. He went Bloodthirster, last one, oh, they hit the catch! Yeah, Fnatic in all kinds of trouble. Actually, will manage to get away. Burnt his flash from that one, and Fnatic just displaying their, their damage on the poke and the fact that XPK can go in at any point here when that ultimate is available. And Alternate are oh, too scared and going to be too low here to really defend fully from this one. His yellow star tries for another grab onto White night doesn't quite land it though so as i was saying this this build here for pushu is really really smart he's already got attack speed because of the new new sign is actually maxing blood boil second Ice Blast first and leaving Consume at level 1. So he's going to have a 45% attack speed buff once Sina hits level, uh, I believe it's going to be level 12 or 13 right there. Uh, and that's going to let him build just attack damage and armor penetration, right? It's Bloodthirster into Last Whisper. We see Blade of the Ruin King. Sometimes we see Infinity Edge for Varus. He's playing as a cast for Max Piercing Arrow first, and he's vaxing the Hail of Arrow second. So pushu has got a lot of burst, but he can back it up with Blood Boil. I see Sina putting that Blood Boil in onto him. Let's have a look down some of the other items here. So as a slowly but surely getting himself up towards that Zonya's Hourglass, which just makes him 
all the more stronger when it comes to these team fights. I mean, got that haunting guys in there, got the sorcerer shoes, that giant's belt, and you know the workings of his Riley's crystal scepter, which speaking of the devil, just finished off. Uh, and once that Zonius comes in there, he automatically becomes someone that you don't want to target instantly when he comes into the fight, even though he's the one that's right on top of you doing all that damage. And it's interesting that he actually hasn't gone Zonius earlier because there's not an easy way to force engages for a fanatic. You just saw actually their standoff at the middle turret. They could poke down with a couldn't really dive in. They just took a lot of damage back from Ezreal, from, from Zed, from Boosted Fate. And so Fnatic, they're actually finding it very hard to, to dive in here. The Zonius would have helped that. Well, could have been caught out somewhat from this one. He is very tanky, as we said before. And as the Nami Tidal Wave comes flying straight down the middle of them, he's going to have to back completely away from that one. Lost just about half of his health from that little, little encounter. You see how strong he is on that front, but look at this, Xpeke coming in here. Gonna be diving underneath the turret as we do see for Lord getting involved, but with Pushu around the corner, there's not much that they can do to keep chasing for a fight. Now, so instead, this is the adaptation that Fnatic makes. They just keep trying to pressure around the map and look for kills on the sides. Yeah, gonna go in towards Jerry there. We actually saw the lantern being used. Uh, someone, yeah, it was yellow, so that flashed over to get in there as well. Um, with that lantern down to bring his teammates with him, but that didn't quite work out. It would have been a very fancy move if they'd have pulled it off for a kill, but not quite happening, but they're doing a lot of damage thanks to that piercing arrow to go through and maybe have their first inner turret of the game. And Alternate knows all they need to do is just try to wave through over and over again. The uh, ultimate out from Ezreal happened a long time ago. You can see these minions, they just lose health so quickly. Uh, Fnatic, though, they're, just, they're strong enough that they still force Alternate back. The wave through was not enough. This is their turret. They can tank it up as well, that shield coming out of Thresh. You saw XPK utilizing that one to make sure that he could just get under the turret and do that. Uh, we've seen Twisted Fate going in for the Twin Shadows, obviously getting that slow down, uh, that, that AP coming with it. But maybe more importantly for him right now, the magic resist as well from that Twin Shadows. That's actually just really just massive. He's facing basically a triple or even quadruple AP comp if you count uh, Thresh as a significant source of magic damage. and. Uh, the problem is, though, that because there's so much magic damage, no one's itemizing against Pushu, and as we kept seeing, the amount of damage those piercing arrows do is absolutely massive and just keeps chunking off and it down. Now we see the first... Uh, yeah, no, the first in the turret of the mid lane. He only has one, technically, so I'm right, yeah. and I'm also very silly at the same time, <laughs> but they managed to take that one down. They're going to back straight away here for the dragon, and, you know, that just restricts what control they've got on their jungle even more than it was before. The outer turret's down. See Fnatic warding completely on the top side of the map. There was a true shot barrage just steaming through, which made them realize that a dragon had already gone, and it puts Fnatic now at 10,000 gold in the lead. And here's the first opening finally for alternate is trying to force this 4v4 in the mid lane as Fnatic are recalling back trying to buy some items but they just can't find the fights they need Fnatic is wave clearing so very well even with their dedicated people on the other side and here's a snipe here for Pharrell Lord. Yeah he's gonna come straight in from the side here teleport in from XPK not worried whatsoever he gets that kill but will he be able to escape he's got everyone piling in there cyanide in the brush with absolute zero Peke is still burning as so as goes in can't quite get in onto Jerry does manage to land that stun though and now he pushes through. This could be trouble for him though as Jerry burns away. He will die so as trying to light him rush off, but White Knight picks up a valuable kill. And a two for two is exactly what alternate needs. I mean, okay, a five for zero would be great, but uh two for two is fine. They're getting shut down gold, they're getting uh, you know, people who are higher levels, they're getting more experience out of this. And the farther they can push this towards late game, the closer it gets for alternate here, and that's this is the trouble here for Fnatic, is they have to keep finding these oddball fights in these sides of the map here. They're going to have a lot of ward control, right? Here's the oracles for Yellowstar. They're going to keep looking for jungle fights instead of fights under turret, because that's how their team sort of works. And if Alternate can re-collapse and, and turn these into good lopsided engagements, they can catch up with kills. One problem that they're having is why not actually going to get hooked in here underneath that top turret. We see Yellow Star going very low as the box comes down. True Shot Barrage not really doing what they'd have expected from that one. Cyanide coming across, but you see the piercing arrow White Knight down to almost nothing straight away after that one. And they're going to look to turn this one around. And so far, doing a fantastic job of it. There's the slow onto Pharrell Lord. Push who needs just one more hit. He will actually get the kill there in the end from the red buff. And they keep chasing down. White Knight will arcane shift away. Say no more kills for that, but such a great defense once again here from Fnatic. And that is a gold lead at work right there. Fnatic forced alternate away in a two versus three. Cyanide and Pushu by themselves made everyone else run backwards despite crowd control. And this gives them the power to take down Baron. There's no health bars here for alternate. They all had to heal. All gone back to heal. And this will be our first Baron of the day. 
I'm coming. Roughly 27.45. And that is a lovely bit of gold for Fnatic to spend. And you see the push, you've got 1,400 of that. There's almost 2,000 gold for Soaz to be spending the next time that he goes home as well. So just generally, Fnatic way in the lead in this one, in the driving seat. And it's going to take a big mistake from their side to throw this one away. They're going to hope they don't steer themselves wrong right here. Fnatic, they've been playing it so well, though. I've got to really compliment this team playing the comp so very well. It's like the like a two for, like a two for two fight. I was like a minor misstep for them in the left hand side of the map. But overall, you see them ward so heavily. I mean, look at the wards around the blue buff on the left hand side of the map. Some of that was to cover uh, their attempt on the Baron. But in general, this is what Fnatic are doing. They have an incredibly good swarming team composition who can keep picking up fights. All of them can dive in there, move quickly, make things happen. Um, and, and push costly, and they just keep finding these openings. We've just seen the first turret of the game go down for alternate in that bottom lane. That was Kurt simply going on his own and saying, you know what, I'm fed up of having a zero next to our turret kills on this one. We need to get at least one, uh, which he's managed to do. There's still almost 11,000 gold behind on this one, though, so still, as we said, going to be a very, very difficult challenge for them to get in this one again. Uh, but we'll see. They're going to have to sit back, soak up as much farm as they possibly can and hope that Fnatic engage where they shouldn't be sometime. That's really going to be their, their their hope right here is to keep basically playing around the Pharrell and Lord Ultimate and hoping that they can find something uh, and just find a lopsided battle. That is really all that happens here is uh, Fnatic now, they've got so much poke that, and because of Baron buff as well, they can siege a turret and win the siege. Neither team has great sustain. The Baron buff tips that in the, in the way of Fnatic. They've got Ken and Ari and Varus all for amazing poke right there. That tips things in their favor. They can siege his bottom lane all they want or just take it because known for alternate will even try to defend this. Yeah, that piercing arrow from Pushu it just makes it almost impossible for him to stick around there because it's absolutely devastating at this point. See them walk in again, Pushu charging one up and half health. Yep. Aranea down to half with that single piercing arrow. And again, you look at the build for Pushu and he's stacking as much attack damage as possible. Bloodthirster, Last Whisper, and then added Infinity Edge. Didn't even upgrade his boots. He just wants a lot of AD to poke these things down and rely on Blood Boil for attack speed. Fnatic set up the scene, looking to land a charm, at which point could expect XPK to just jump straight over the wall. DFG, I mean, the likes of Jerry, Aranea, in fact, all of them probably outside of Kurt wouldn't survive a full burst after DFG there uh, from uh, XPK. So Ari, as they continue to push, there's another arrow down to pretty much half HP. Jerry at the back just trying to keep up the heals as much as he can. They managed to actually bring in Kurt there with the charm. He's going to get Cell Division pops as the uh, tidal wave comes over as well. But Soaz is actually going to go in. Pops is on his maybe a little bit too early there, but they've managed to get the kill on Kurt. Well, that's a tanky man down, and that's what they were obviously aiming for here. It was a really smart play by Fnatic. They didn't want to win a team fight. They just wanted to ensure another advantage here. They said, look, You've got to leave Kerb alone. You cannot defend his passive there. That's why Soaz didn't go any farther. He said, look, I'm going to get you off the turret, then Zonius. You're, you can't kill me now. You've got to leave your teammate to die. Now it's a 5v4 with Baron buff. We have another wave right here. Turret's ours, inhibitor's ours. Another advantage for Fnatic. Yeah, massive advantage. That's, that gold lead is still climbing this entire time as well, which is the real worrying thing for, for alternate. Uh, you know, if those lanes are pushed out, you'd think, okay, maybe we can soak up a bit of farm, bring some gold back into this one. But fact is, look at the top lane. It's pushed up on towards the turret. Is White Knight going to get caught out? He's a dead man. Yellow Star, his AD, carry, uh, his AD carry sensors there just chiming in at the end. So yeah, I, I can last hit that. <laughs> he tried. The Q came out. I think if he actually auto attacked, it would have done more damage because of the soul counter. But uh, that's just amazing. And now here comes a fight for Soaz the top lane. They're going to go for Soaz. He doesn't have that Zonyas from before. They throw absolutely everything in on him, but it doesn't matter. Xpeke is joining now with the teleport. For Ellen Lord, got to pull the right card here. He pulls a red card in the end, which is probably better than the blue in the grand scheme of things. We see that, uh, that Xpeke is low uh, on mana, but Cyanide coming around the side here. He's going to try and get in position for that absolute zero. It will be Pecky to take down for Ellen Lord once again, and Cyanide is still chasing until he gets locked up in that Aqua Prison. That will be the end, but a great hook from Yellow Star will find Kerb all on his own here inside of the river. Xpeke KK says, nah, <laughs> not even getting involved with that one, I need mana. He's got him, he does have home guard though, so he can maybe come back from the right hand side and cut <laughs> off Kerb. Oh, Kerb with a good play. Oh, that's a really good play. He gets himself back over the wall, and now it's Soaz's turn. Yeah, now Kerb's in even more trouble, funnily enough, running away from that thresh before he'll use Let's Bounce to cover a bit more ground. Another elastic slingshot, and he's out of danger.
a good escape at least, but Fnatic again, finding their openings right there for Elden Lord. Unfortunately, didn't get quite the right card for League of Legends. I realize in football, the red card's more severe than the yellow card, but this time around, it's just a slow, not a stun. I see what you did there. But he's absolutely right. It's almost the opposite of what it was, uh, or what it is in football. <laughs> what it was. Uh, what it was. It. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe one day in football we'll see a blue card as well. Who knows? I doubt it. Uh, Aaron A are here just going to clear out this bottom lane. Of course, Super Minions are already streaming through on that side of the map. And that's something that they'll be happy for in terms of you know, a bit of extra gold, but they've got no control over their jungle anymore. They can't really uh, you know, come out for this next Baron at this point either. They're just not strong enough. Uh, and to be honest, Fnatic are going to be waiting for them if they do. Fnatic hasn't let Alternate get control of their jungle the entire time. They played around the early jungle lead so very well. The entire team composition just worked beautifully. And right now we see Peke crest over a hundred minion kill lead against his lane opponent. And we, that's, that's, honestly, that's 1v1 skill matchup. That was Peke outplaying him from the very beginning of the matchup. There was actually no jungle interference for the first like six levels or so. That's just skill right there. And it's amazing to see. All right now Fnatic looking for another inhib turret. Pushing on towards that middle lane. There's a lantern for Soaz. I'll get across the sides uh, of the base here, just that little bit quicker. Another thing that we don't necessarily think of. Thresh off as they are going to see the Hogland and Fnatic going in. They managed to do a lot of damage to Aranea. He will be finished off there by Pushu, and they might not be done with this one just yet. The lantern put down for Ellen Lord is actually out of position completely as Aranea is actually going to be finishing off there. Cyanide going low. Destiny going to be used here. Where is Twisted Fate going? He actually used it to go home from that one. And Fnatic decide to back away. I'm trying to see if there's someone out there overextended. Of course, Pekka had already gone down, so uh, not much picked up there. Now it's just Fnatic trying to run away. They're not really outnumbered, but there's nothing else for them to pick up here. So they're being safe, making sure they're back and healthy in time for the Baron respawn. They must have had a decent amount of cash to go back with here uh, and spend from this one. Yeah, there's a thousand or so on pretty much everyone in there. See Boots and Mobility coming out for Thresh. Uh, he got the Kindle gem in there as well, picking up some extra wards. Warden's Mail for Nunu's already got, of course, that Runic Bulwark. But there's not even an Aegis to be seen on the other side. Now, it's it's a very, very rough thing. I'm actually surprised to not see an Aegis because right now Kerp is just, he's still sort of building selfishly uh, the Kindle Gem plus the Cloth Armor could turn into like a Locket of Iron Solari, which would be nice, but I, I am very surprised to not see Runic Bulwark when you're facing so many magic damage dealers here. It would help the team a heck of a lot. Yeah, that element missing here completely for Alternate. Byron, of course, has now respawned. Alternate got no wards, can't, can't get wards down. That's the problem. It's not that they just haven't put any down. It's because they're just not allowed to. Fnatic have said no every single time. They try to come out of there. They've got super minions on the top. Uh, out, sorry, on the bottom lane coming through there. And this is just going to be a free Baron for Fnatic. Yeah, you mentioned the ward coverage and the ward control. Yellowstar has been holding onto an Oracle for the last 10 to 15 minutes at least so far. And he's not died. He's 1-0 and 5. He got that one kill in the base a minute ago. But Yellowstar has been doing amazingly. We talked about him growing into that role. He's, again, performing that role incredibly, incredibly well, making everything happen, won the bottom lane, won the ward coverage war, and voila, Fnatic are, are doing amazing on this map. 16,000 gold lead currently, and one of the problems that teams tend to have when they newly form, and uh, we can probably put Fnatic into that one here with the changes, although uh, they might have something to say about them themselves here, is that closing out games is not always the easiest thing to do. Uh, you know, when you've got not got that synergy 100% as you'd expect it to have, but to be honest, the way that Yellowstar and Pushu have played, they look like they've been on this Fnatic team a lot longer than oh. a single week, because Peke is going to nuke down White Knight there, gets away with the lantern towards the wall. The tidal wave comes over the side, but Fnatic with that one for zero force themselves in onto the inhibitor and they could even go through to finish off the gaming. They've got super minions coming in with them as well. There's likely to be the game here. I mean, this is Fnatic diving in. Another hook lands. They're going to catch up to Pharrell and Lord Soaz just wants to dive and get more kitty on this game. Another cell division coming out as well. This is looking great. Fnatic just picking up the kills to make sure they take care of business. No one's going to stop them out right here. Fnatic playing their composition perfectly, playing it from second one, and just a well, well-deserved win here. Fnatic taking the first game of the day. First game of the day for Fnatic here over the league leaders alternate, which we didn't talk about this earlier on, but it actually opens doors for another team in the league.
to yeah. bring us all tied at the top. Exactly. The very next game we're going to have here is going to feature Gambit Gaming. And if they win that match against Meteor Makers, they'll be tied for first place. Here, of course, Fnatic now also sitting there. If Gambit loses, Fnatic ties them for second. So no matter what, we're going to see some kind of movement in the standings in just about an hour. Yeah, fantastic performance coming out there from Fnatic. And you now we saw this game, it was a, back in Moscow, it was a, a, an amazingly hectic game with kills coming in left, right and center. This was not quite on that level when it comes to uh, how action-packed it was, but Fnatic's play and what they did there, I mean, look at Cyanide in the jungle. He spent so much time on alternate side of the map. He was putting pressure constantly onto that blue buff. He was always in the right place at the right time. And that's them playing the comp so well, knowing yeah. when to invade for stuff, when to gank lanes, when when to steal stuff away. And there's actually a stat I want to point out for this game. Uh, so bear with me for a second. They had 22 kills and only 31 assists, which means every kill was helped by like barely, like by basically have one and a half people, which means all those kills were in these like two on one invades or these like three on one tower dives. They weren't getting their kills in big team fights. They would get one yeah. or two kills in a big team fight, but they were mostly Cyanide and Peke stealing the blue buff, Cyanide coming and ganking top lane for Soaz. It was these little engagements over and over and over again that Fnatic kept picking up that got them the win here. Even towards the end as well, when they were sieging up there, the, the aim wasn't to have a five versus five fight. The aim was to catch out one person and then not allow the, the other four to have a chance to even defend it. I mean, we saw there at the end, White Knight stood over the side of the wall. All of a sudden, Ari's in his face, DFG absolutely destroyed. Yeah. We saw Kurt, the tankiest man on the team, get hooked in there, get charmed up. They finished him off, and that's where the first inhibitor came down for Fnatic as well. So overall, this, this one or two kills, uh, this single target play, more than a big team fight style coming out, really saving the day and winning it out for them. So beautiful stuff right here. We do have a uh, replay, though, from Jason. So uh, Jason Kaplan, if you want to break down the match, please feel free. A phenomenal game on Ari, and let's talk about that pick a little bit, because they banned out your Cassidy and first pick TF, and you said, that's fine, I'll just take Ari and throw in a little teleport for that global presence. So how did that pan out? Well, when, when they banned, uh, the main idea before the game was they want to first pick Nunu, or TF, because we won't ban any of those, and we will pick the other. And when we saw Devan Kassadin, it was like they want to go for TF because they don't want to get counter. But it's fine, because if we get Nunu, I know with Ari, I will beat TF early and mid game really hard. And with Nunu, we will have the, the jungle winning as well. So TF won't be able to get strong, and he won't be able to do anything. I will just snowball. With, with Ari, I feel confident against TF that I won't lose early or mid game. And that's what I did. I picked Teleport. I don't even need Ignite. I can just counter gank him. And it worked out really well because I got a lot of advantage. I died only to Zed once, and TF was like 0 4. He had no damage at all. Like, he couldn't kill me at all and, anymore. And then it's the perfect game for Ari when you can push and go aggressive. Yeah, snowballed absolutely. So you had that Nunu in the jungle, and they picked Zed and Zach. Were you surprised that they chose to go with Zach in the top lane and not in the jungle? Or Yeah, first. When we were like, he said top because they didn't pick Zach. But then when they pick it, we were thinking about it a bit. Yellow Star said he saw Ara playing Zed sometimes. But we were like, I don't know, Zach is better in jungle than in top. And we, we had no idea. Actually, we had no idea. That's why we picked Kennen. Because Kennen is good or safe against both. He won't lose the lane against any of them. So we're like, just pick Kennen, no matter who it is. I will have a safe lane, maybe a bit harder, but still it will be equal, not bad. And that's why we did it. All right, so the laning phase was an absolute success. You absolutely won the early game, but then it seemed as in the mid lane as if you weren't really able to initiate when you wanted to. So how do you make sure you were able to win that game in the end? Yeah, we, the problem we had is we didn't have a real tank. The setup we had, we had Nunu, but he wasn't super tanky. He cannot just go in tank to red and get focus. He will die really fast. And we have Ari, Ken, and Treya sets. Someone has to land something. So what we were doing is waiting for a charm. Like, we did one, but we didn't kill the guy, and we couldn't take anything. So what we were doing is, like, just play slow. We, are, we have a lot of advantage. We are taking their jungle. We're going to make the lead bigger and bigger. So we are just try for a charm or a hook. If it doesn't work, just go get Drake, get their buffs, come back again and try again, and just play it slow for 10 minutes until they make a mistake or we land some skill set. And you landed everything in the end there. Um, now, you guys won against the number one place team on your way up once again. And tomorrow, you're going to be facing SK Gaming, who managed to win for the first time uh, last time around. So how are you going into that one? Do you think they're still as strong as they were that weekend? They, they were strong, but I think the problem we had against them was the uh, TF. We were confident 
about it, like let's leave them TF. It's not a bad pick, but and I did I didn't practice that much against TF. I knew with Serath I would be fine, but as a team in general, he was able to pull a lot of ganks and annoy the rest of the team. So I, th I think this time I will just pick a strong matchup for one on one and just not make a mistake. Right. It's noble the mid lane. Do you think you underestimated them a little bit last time around? Yeah. All right. All right. But good luck in that matchup tomorrow, and congratulations once again on a great RE performance.